Hello and welcome to a brand new series of Only Connect. I hope you've missed us while we were away. What did I do on my summer holidays, I hear you ask? Well, I'd like you to picture a certain iconic scene in From Here to Eternity. Not that one, the one at the end where Deborah Carr stares bleakly at the horizon, contemplating the sheer misery and futility of being here at all. We weren't lucky with the weather. Spain next year, I think. Joining me tonight to kick off the series are, on my right, Paul Jackson, the area manager for a charity who grows his own fruit and veg. Joe Beatty, a civil servant who was charged by a rhino in the Ngorongoro crater. And their captain, Paul Richardson, a retired fire officer who had a lengthy conversation with Princess Anne about the problems with the M6 motorway around Preston. United by a love of Lancashire, they are the hot pots. Paul, how do you all know each other? Well, we used to attend the same church together, but latterly we've become drinking buddies. And do you drink round the back of the church or you go further away? Anywhere where there's any available. That's the spirit. I'll see you in my dressing room afterwards. You will be facing this evening on my left, Oliver Levy, a freelance designer who accidentally ate a cake intended for Elon Musk. Bob Decoe, a data scientist who was chased by an elephant while holidaying in Botswana. And their captain, Matt Loxham, an air pollution toxicologist who has played chess for Lancashire and drinks a lot of coffee. United by a passion for pop music, positivity and puns, they are the Poptimists. So what made your team apply for Only Connect? Uh, we've been on a lot of quiz shows separately and some of us together, but this is the, the zenith to aim for, so it had to be done. Or the Nadir. <laughs> we'll, find we'll find out. out. <laughs> we'll find out. You won the toss, Poptimist, but you've elected to put your opponents in first. So Hot Pots, you're in the hot seat. Which hieroglyph would you like? Two reads, please. Two reads will be the first question of the new series. What is the connection between four apparently random clues? Of course, if you can tell me the right answer after fewer than four clues, you will get more points. Good luck. Your first clue is coming up now. Next, please. Next, please. All of those foods have been banned in the country beneath them. They are banned foods. You didn't need to see the last clue. Durian, which is not allowed on the <laughs> Singapore subway because it smells so disgusting. What do you know about the stories behind these other clues? Uh, I'm aware of Kinder Eggs were banned, I think, because of the small toys inside that became a choking hazard for children. Apparently so. Uh, and Roquefort and samosas, we haven't the faintest idea, to be honest. Well, Roquefort, it was only until 2005 because there were worries because it was unpasteurised and might be dangerous in some way. Do you know about the samosas over there? No. They were banned by a militant group, Al Shabaab, that controls much of Somalia because, apparently, the samosa resembles the Holy Trinity the Christian symbol, oh. so they were banned. And they actually went round in vans with loudspeakers announcing it, samosas are banned. <laughs> Not at all worried that this might render them ridiculous. That's brilliant. So well done, you're off the blocks with two points. You may have your own question now, which would you like? Uh, horned Viper, please. The Viper, okay. What is the connection between these apparently random clues? Here's the first. Uh, next. Uh, next. Uh, next. Is that right with Elizabeth yeah. Lincoln? Uh, they died 100 years apart. Nice guess, but that is not the answer, I'm afraid. So, Hot Pots, I'm going to show you the last clue. You've got the chance of a bonus point. They have mountains and, uh, mountains and dams named after them. They did not. I think some of them did, but yeah. not all of them. This is really nice. If you don't spot it, you don't spot it, but it's really nice. McKinley was succeeded as president by Theodore Roosevelt and Hoover by Franklin D. Roosevelt. Uh, Washington by John Adams and Monroe by John Quincy Adams. They were succeeded by presidents with the same surname. So who succeeded Lincoln and Kennedy? 
Johnson. 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 Andrew Johnson, Lyndon B. Johnson, and Reagan and Clinton were both succeeded yes. by Bushes. Bushes. Obviously, it happens quite a lot in America because they have quite a lot of father and son presidents, mm. which I find so odd. I did the same thing as my father. I think it's one thing to go into the family business if you're a writer or a sort of greengrocer. To run the country, though, maybe they should just make it hereditary. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be the only one who'd love to see Baron Trump as president. <laughs> yes, all succeeded by presidents with the same surname. Quite a pleasing connection there, I think. In the sense of a quiz question. If it was your country, you might be chilled by it. No bonus for you, Hot Pots, what would you like? Uh, can we have that horse, please? Yes, you can. Ooh, they're picture clues. So you'll be seeing okay. pictures of something. They all have something in common. What is it? Your first picture clue is coming in now. Next, please. Next, please. What is it? They're all games. They're all games. Go, sorry. All games. Well, we think they're all the name of games. Board games. Board games. They all share their names with board games. Very well done. You didn't need to see the last clue, which is a picture of Lenny Henry playing Othello. What can we see? Uh, the first one is Go. Yeah, a very complicated sort of strategy uh, game, Go. The second one, we're not sure of. It, but no, that's, that's Labyrinth. Yeah, where the character's name is Ludo. Oh. Ludo from Labyrinth. The third yeah. one is sorry. It's sorry. The sitcom, and you know, both the sitcom and the board game have an exclamation mark. So it's not sorry, it's sorry. sorry. And that, and uh, Othello at the end there. Back to you, Poptimists for a choice. Lion, please. Lion, OK. <laughs> it's the music question, I'm afraid. You will be hearing your clues. What do they have in common? First one coming in now. Next. And when it's a sleeping time That's when we rise We start to swing Swing to the sky Next. Next. We meet every day At the same cafe Two seconds. Oliver. Uh, uh, mm, uh, me and me and. Oh yeah, me and. Me and. Me and is the right answer. What did we hear? Uh, me and Julio down by the schoolyard. Uh, Paul, Paul Simon. Simon. Me and Mrs. James. Mm -hmm. At the end. Uh, Billy Paul. Um, uh, me and my shadow. Uh, me and my shadow. Frank Sinatra and uh, Sammy, Sammy Davis, Davis Jr. And the first one. Uh, Bell and Sebastian with me and uh, don't know, no. me and the major, or as many of you as prefer the major and I. Yes, me and the rather grammatically clumsy titles construction. Well done. That is what they have in common. So a point for you. Back to you, hot pots. What would you like? Uh, water, please. Water. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. I've got next. I've got next. Next, please. Next, please. Next, please. Three seconds. Greek letters. Not it, I'm afraid. Poptimist, do you want to go for a bonus? Shall we try? Uh, is it apotheosis? No, but why do you say that? Well, Beethoven's seventh was definitely described as the apotheosis of the dance, I think, by Wagner. Right. Um, and maybe <laughs> some of maybe there's a festival of the apotheosis of something on the third of November. Oh, that's very nicely constructed. I can't give you a point. <laughs> I love this question. Let me tell you that you know the answer. You know the answer. You know the answer. Even you, you do know, even after all those drinks. This is to do with the letter V, which is the seventh oh. of Beethoven. <sighs> it's at the centre of gravity. It's the third letter of November, and it's the beginning of very. The letter V. It's hugely frustrating. They are word <laughs> clues. It's hugely frustrating, yeah. isn't it? it? Is. Yeah. Frustrating. I think a little clip of Paul saying that's hugely frustrating could be the trailer for the series. <laughs> isn't it sort of annoying in a beautiful way? Yeah. It is. Welcome to the show. 
But there is one question of the round, the twisted flax. That will come to you, optimists. Your first clue is coming in now. Another one. Yeah. Uh, next. Next. I think that's, I think that's this means one. Uh, you can put the word means between them, so no means no, this means war, Brexit means Brexit. That is absolutely right. And the fourth clue, love means never having to say you're sorry. <laughs> Has that been your experience, Joe? Not at all. <laughs> I mean, I believe almost exactly the opposite. Constant apologies is what I want. Luckily, I married the right person for that. Very well spotted. Brexit means Brexit. This means war. No means no. And you didn't need the last clue. Well done for the points. That means at the end of round one, the Poptimists have three points. The Hot Pots have four. <laughs> On to round two, the sequences round. This time, there will still be four clues, but the teams may see a maximum of three of them because I want to know what comes forth in a sequence? Hot pots, you'll be going first again. Mm -hmm. Which hieroglyph would you like? Uh, Horn of Viper, please. The Horn of Viper. OK, I will be revealing the first in a sequence of clues. What would come forth? Your time starts now. Next, please. Next, please. Oh, the, it's all okay. 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 going up. No, no, it's yeah, the next, the the next biggest. So it'll be okay. Auckland. Auckland. Is the right answer? And what's the sequence? We think there are largest cities in New Zealand going in towards the biggest. Yeah, that's right, by population yeah. size. And it's a huge leap because the population of Christchurch is about 380,000. Population of Auckland, 1.6 and a half million, something like that. A huge jump. New Zealand cities by size. It's actually a question written by one of our new question setters who lives in Australia. Right. So basically, in New Zealand. <laughs> Very well done. Back to you, Poptimists, for a question. Twisted flax, please. The twisted flax. OK, these are going to be picture clues. What would you expect to see in the fourth picture? Here's the first. Next. Next. Detective Sam Spade. Is an acceptable answer. That's absolutely brilliant. Sure. What's going on in this sequence? Ace of Hearts, Jesse Ventura. Uh, so Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, the film. It is the film Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. What can you tell me about the film Ace Ventura, Pet Detective? Uh, it's one of Jim Carrey's less critically admired <laughs> efforts, I think. Have you seen it? No. I've Are seen it 32 times. Is, is that true? Yes. When I was doing my university finals, it was on at the local cinema. My friend Charlie and I went every single day to unwind. Well, A, to unwind, B, to try and understand the film. Let me tell you, struggling with a university degree is as nothing <laughs> compared to trying to follow the plot of Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. It's all sort of, sort of rings disappear, but there are too many rings. That it, it makes absolutely <laughs> no sense. Have you seen When Nature Calls? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Although, in a way, it made more sense and was thus disappointing. <laughs> Very well done. Good Ace Ventura pet detective knowledge over there. Back to you, Hot Pots. What would you like? Uh, can we have lime, please? Yes, you can. What would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. <laughs> Next, please. Next, please. Two seconds. Nineteen twenty five, one, comma two. And why would that be? The go down in 30 year blocks and the rest is a stab in the dark, I'm afraid. Yes, it's sort of a sequence going down in 30 year blocks, but the second bit, no, I can't accept it, I'm not persuaded. So, Poptimists, do you know what sequence is meant here? 1885 equals 
three. Is the right yeah. answer. <laughs> and why? Um, these are uh, historical years and the Back to the Future films in which they appear. It is about Back to the Future. You haven't revised it, despite my repeatedly saying on this show it's the greatest film of all time. In Back to the Future, it's set originally in 1985, and so that's why it's in all three films, one, two and three. So it's not a sequence of films. The years are going back in time. 2015 only appears in part two. 1985 is in all of them. 1955 is in all of them, because that's when he goes back to. And 1885 only in part three. Poptimists, which question would you like? Uh, we'll have the Eye of Horus, please. The Eye of Horus. OK, what would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Well, it could be that might be, isn't it? Oh, no, no, it's, um, Dan Brown, isn't it? It's origin. You should go back in for another one. Do you want another one? Play it safe and we'll back in. Next. Yeah, so I'm going to have to be careful with the films the other way around, so... Yeah, so... Da Vinci Code. Is the right answer. Very well then. What's the sequence? These are Dan Brown novels uh, in reverse chronological order. That's right, the Robert Langdon novels going back towards the Da Vinci Code. Very well done. Hot pots, what would you like? Water, please. Water. OK, what is the fourth in this sequence? Here's the first. Next, please. These are the newspapers that are independent. 20th was the sun. 19th, aren't they? Well, I mean, in the order of circulation, do we think? So we're next. looking for 18. Oh, God, next. Next, next, next. next please. So, 18th, colon. Next, please. Eighteenth colon Daily Express. I'm afraid I can't take it. Poptimist, do you want to have a go for bonus? Eighteenth colon The Times. The Times is an acceptable answer. The Observer, an even better one, of course. They are the founding years of newspapers. We needed one that was founded in the 18th century and The Express actually founded in 1900. So we wanted one of the old ones, The Times and The Observer. So well done, Poptimist. You get the bonus and you get the last question of the round. The two reads. What would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. It's not enough, I'm sure. Next. Oh, is this the main gas in the atmosphere of planets on the sun? Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to say four, yeah, three. Three would be a three would be nine. Yeah, 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 try, yeah, try one more. Next. Yeah. yeah. Three, nit three nitrogen. And why would that be? These are the order of planets from the sun and the main constituent of the atmosphere. That's exactly right. So what is denoted by the number six, four, five and three? They're the order from the sun. Yeah. Sixth planet, fifth planet, fourth planet, Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Mars. Do you know the other planets? I'm not entirely sure. Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Earth. That's exactly right. Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Earth. It's the planets that are sixth, fifth, fourth and third from the sun and their main constituent part. Very well done. That means at the end of round two, the hot pots have six points, the Poptimists have 13. <laughs> Time now for the connecting wall. You haven't missed this. It's 16 jumbled up clues that need sorting into four connected groups of four. There is only one perfect solution, but there are clues that will try to trick our teams by fitting into more than one category. Poptimists, you have the dubious pleasure of being first on this round. Would you like lion or water? Uh, we'll have a go at the lion wall, please. OK, you have two and a half minutes to solve the lion wall, starting now. W's tungsten, wicket western what? What is? There's also one, maybe? Yes. Yeah, one. There's one. So... So that's so space spaceships, spaceships, Enterprise, and Stromo, Nemesis, and so Twine. Explore, explore, and Target as well. And there's loads. Yeah. Well, there's zones. So yeah, there's Goldilocks. Goldilocks, and Time Zone, Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone. Uh, what was Twilight Zone? Enterprise, Enterprise Zone. Enterprise Zone, yeah. Enterprise Zone. Yeah. 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 And Gold Goldilocks. Yeah. 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 I miss out on time, I guess. Yeah. And Twilight Zone. Three strikes now. So now we've got 
So four shifts. So the quite entire expensive. record we can park. Time yeah. record we can park. Um, so so they're spacious. Yeah. Time record. We're doing wicket now. Like before they could be wicket. Record. Oh, can't they be? Well, they can all be nouns and verbs, can that one? Uh, yeah, one can wicket, maybe. Well, well not really, that's yeah, podium. Probably. I mean, it's fifth, we've got nothing else. To wicket. Um, no, I don't think so. No, no, Let's no. come back to it. So which of the other four Record. could fit? Well, it's these four, almost, certainly. Yeah. Shall we try it? Why not? No, no. We'll put three of them in, so we can just... OK. Um, Central. Um, I'll see if I wicket. Leg before, no, try that. Can we tame, change the leg? Record. Pair. Record. Time. Emit. 30 seconds Shall I just remaining. go for Yeah, yeah, yeah try That's yeah. it, you saw them all. Very well done. You made that look easy. So, what about the extra points for the connections? What can you tell me about the first blue group? What West Tungsten won? They can't be represented by the letter W. That's right. W stands for them in the periodic table and so on. And what about the green group? Goldilocks, Twilight, Enterprise, Erogenous. They're all types of zones. They're all zones. You found the erogenous zone. <laughs> all zones. And what about this next burgundy group? Whatever colour I say it is, people tweet me to say it's a different colour. So let's say it's a yellow group. Nemesis, TARDIS and so on. They are spaceships. Um, would you like some more? You could tell me more. They are fictional. They are fictional spaceships <laughs> from various films and TV programmes. Very well done. And the turquoise group, Time, Record or Record, Wicket Park. Yeah. Um, are they things that can be nouns and verbs at the same time? To time, to... I think to wicket <laughs> is your problem there. Yeah. Nearly. Yeah. They can be followed by keeper. Oh. Time keeper, record keeper, <sighs> wicket keeper, park keeper. <laughs> They're all keepers, but you did find all four groups and get three connecting points, so that is a total of seven. Time to bring back the hot pots now, slide them under the grill and see what they can do with their own wall. It'll be the water wall for you. You've got two and a half minutes to solve it, starting now. Kirkwood, Carol Kirkwood is a weather reporter. Yeah. Um, Michael Fish, Kirkwood. Avery. Avery, Oscar. and... Any others? That's one anyhow. Um, Gundy. Right, you've got Don't some. Gundies. You've got squirrel, capybara, lemming, lemming and shrew. shrew. Squirrel, shrew, lemming, capybara. Right, no. Gundy's one. Shall we try Gundy? Yeah. Shrew, Gundy, uh, capybara. Shrew, Gundy, lemming. Well, there we right, are. hang on, let's go weather, back to weather. weather. Kirkwood, fish, uh, Avery. Leah. These mongers, uh, Costa monger, Aya monger, War monger, Fish monger. Right, stop. Three right, strikes stop there. now. Stick weather, easy. weather. Kirkwood, Avery. Might be, it might be a red herring. Might have um, to ditch right, that. Right now, wait a minute. Go on. Um, measure, measure Venice, measure. Leah, yeah. and Shrew will be. So, so Leah, Shrew. Hang on, no, 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 okay. no. It's, it's Leah, Venice. Nothing and measure because it's titles. It's much ado about nothing. Yeah. Measure for yeah, measure, yeah, yeah, merchant yeah, yeah, yeah. of Venice. So get rid of that. Yeah. yeah. Venice. That's, Venice. That's, and that will be nothing. Nothing. No, no. Hang on. If you do it. So what are the other one? Are we saying Avery, it's weather? It was shrew rich. and rich. And right. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> so Leah. Shrew. Measure. I think. Slow down. We're gonna oh, all right. We've got one more laugh left, don't we now? Right. Yes, we have. We've got one more laugh left now. So we think Let's leave Leah out this time. Yep. So you've got Shrew, Shrew Venice, nothing. Venice, Venice. nothing. Measure. You're me saying. Yes, so shall we go for it? Okay, okay. You've solved the wall. Very well done. Just at the last go there, your last life, it's solved. What about the connections? Tell me about the first blue group starting squirrel. They're all uh, animals that eat nuts and like rodent type animals. Yeah, rodents, yeah, I think, okay. is a way of. They probably do eat nuts, but who doesn't? Yeah. What about the green group? Iron, war, costa, fish. Uh, they're all mongers. They're all mongers, simple as that. Iron monger, war monger, and so on. The next group, shrew, nothing, Venice. Uh, they're all parts of titles of Shakespeare plays. That's right, they're the ending of titles of Shakespeare plays. Taming of the shrew, much to do about nothing, merchant of Venice, measure for measure. And the last turquoise group... 
Uh, they're all weather presenters. They are the weather presenters. Yes, Fisher, Red Herring. It was Ben Rich, you didn't uh, know. Right. They're all uh. BBC weather presenters. So you did find all the groups and all the connections, plus you get the bonus. That's the maximum of ten points. Let's have a look at the overall scores. The Hot Pots have 16 points. The Poptimists have 20. So who's going to go home? Nobody, because we've changed the structure again. We've gone back to the old system where everybody gets at least two goes. So nobody's going home tonight, but the winner, decided by round four, will go straight through to the next round. The losers get another go. In round four, of course, what are the disguise clues? We've taken well-known names, phrases and sayings. We've taken out the vowels. We've squidged up the consonants. The teams must decipher those disguised clues. And, of course, if you give me a wrong answer in this round, you will lose a point. So be careful. Fingers on buzzers, teams. I can tell you that the first group of clues are all things that can be ordered at a chippy. Optimists. Large cotton chips. I will, thank you. Optimists. Mushy peas. Correct. Optimists. Battered sausage. Lovely. Optimists. Delicious. Next category, double acts reversed. Hot pots. Wise and Morecambe. Correct. Optimists. Dave and Chaz. Yes, it is. Optimists. Pace and Hail. Correct. Optimists. Deck and Ant. Well done. Next category, agricultural idioms. Optimists. Reap the benefits. Yes, it is. Optimists. Needle in a haystack. Correct. Optimists. Plow your own furrow. I will. Hot boss. Saw your wild oats. Correct. Next category, things to follow. Optimists. The leader. Correct. What's that camel? Correct. <laughs> that next clue, the yellow brick road, but the bell has gone for the end of the quiz. What a round four from you, Poptimus. My word, you're off and in the chippy, <laughs> I say admiringly. At the end of the game, the hot pots finish with 19 points. The Poptimists have an impressive 31. Very well done. You are straight through to the next round. Hot Pots, I'm glad to say it's not goodbye. We'll be seeing you again later in the series. Thanks very much for watching. It's really nice to be back. And that's it. Although I have got to make a little announcement about the results of last year's series. The arsonists sadly had to be disqualified after that unfortunate business with the canteen. So the official finishing order for series 13 now goes the scratchers, the winkers, the twitchers, the narcoleptics, the burglars, the fiddlers, the aches and pains and the Richard Stilgo fans. In a happy twist, we have been able to rebuild the canteen. Goodbye.